So a question I get asked a lot these days is, if I'm selling digital products, how do I price them? And that is exactly what I'm gonna cover in today's video. I'm going to tell you two methods you can use and why I recommend you actually do a combination of those two methods to work out the prices for your digital products. Welcome, if you don't know me, my name's Jess. I've been selling my handmade jewelry online since 2008 under the Afira label. And I've been selling digital products since about 2010 uh, when I started to actually sell ebooks to help other makers and that eventually turned into my business create and thrive where i teach makers how to take their handmade hobby and turn it into a thriving and profitable business now these days there are a lot more people who are doing uh, digital products print on demand type products and while there's arguments about you know how handmade these things are you know there's that crossover between handmade and art and design and the lines are blurry there i do have a lot more people in my community who are doing this sort of work so i do want to talk about it today because not only do i have experience selling digital products myself for over a decade it's something that i think it's important to get your head around because the pricing uh, formula or the rules of pricing digital products is very different to the rules of pricing a physical product where you have you know um you have to buy materials and things like that. That being said, there are some elements that do combine. So let's get into this process of pricing our digital products. Now, when I talk about digital products, I'm talking about things that you make to download. So that might be graphics, it might be um, templates, it might be patterns, you know, so crochet or knitting or sewing patterns. Uh, it might be graphics you make for print on demand as well. That's sort of we can kind of use that a little bit but i'm mostly talking about printable downloads in today's video and digital products in general as well so maybe you are selling ebooks maybe you're selling your own courses or workshops online and people can buy them and download them and these are things where you're not exchanging directly time for money so if you're running a live workshop that's going to be different to a workshop you've recorded and people then buy on somewhere like skillshare or teachable or something like that or your own website like i do okay so there were Two main ways, as I said, to think about pricing digital products, cost-based pricing and value-based pricing. So let's start with cost-based pricing. Cost-based pricing is basically where you add up all of the costs of making the product, as well as any fees and taxes that you're going to pay on each product that you sell and use that number to come up with a price for the product. I would argue that this also includes the production time, which is going to be different depending on the type of download it is. So for example, if you are doing say a pattern, it's going to be a lot more work potentially because you have to get, you have to test it, you have to get tested. So it might be a long process to create the pattern. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, a simple template download might not take you very long to produce. So think about the following things when it comes to cost-based pricing. First of all, your skill level, uh, you know, how much time uh, you've put into learning this skill, being able to do this thing. So you do have to take that into account, like any professional or artist or craftsperson, you take into account your skill level. And of course, the time, as I said, that goes into creating the product has to go and be accounted for. Next, what expenses have gone into, apart from your time, which we've just covered, and skill level, what expenses have gone into creating this product and in your business more generally if you have a printables business a download business you have to take into account all the other costs all the other overheads that you uh, have to pay for to keep your business running and somehow incorporate that into your product price another question to ask yourself is what percentage of every dollar is going to go in taxes and you have to take that into account when setting that final top, uh, price and of course how much money do you want to make after taxes and expenses are all taken into account? So put all that all those numbers together and look at it per item. Obviously, you know, things like overheads can be spread across different items, but if you only make and sell one or two or three things, you have to account for that. If you're making a hundred or two hundred things, then you can spread that out a bit more across the items. Okay, so let's briefly talk now about value-based pricing, which is where you pick a price based on what the market price tends to be, what people are willing to pay 
for your product and the value they perceive in your product. So some questions to ask here would be, what is a customer realistically going to spend on this product? What are similar products going for in the marketplace and which ones are selling and which ones aren't? Where do you want to position yourself in the marketplace? Do you want to be the cheap budget alternative? Do you want to be a mid-range product or do you want to be a higher end exclusive product in that particular niche that you are selling in? And of course, as part of this, you have to be very careful to convey the value of your product to your customers. So you have to have good images, you have to have an enticing title, you have to have a good description that conveys the benefits and the value of your product to your customers rather than just showing the bare bones features. Now, personally, I advocate for a combination of cost-based and value-based pricing. I think it's very much like what I talk about when it comes to handmade business, where I I call it pricing with the head and pricing with the heart. You have to do the maths first to make sure you're not missing out on money you actually need to keep this business sustainable. Then you can go over to the value aspect of things and you can adjust that price according to the value that you want people to see in your product. There are a few other things here. So first of all, the first time you do this is always going to be the hardest. Uh, The first time you make anything new, like you do a knitting pattern for the first time or you do some sort of printable for the first time because you're on a learning curve and it's taking you longer because you have to figure everything out as you go. As you get more experience and you make more and more products, that is obviously going to cut down and it's going to be faster and faster because you'll you'll know what you're doing and you'll build up a system. So, you know, it's hard to take the very first time as your, this is how much time it takes me to make a product. And you're going to have to keep that in mind that you're probably going to spend more time than you actually earn the money back for potentially with your first product because you are in that learning phase. Okay. So I have priced a lot of digital products over the years. I've even sold like I've sold eBooks, I've sold downloads and For me, it's definitely a combo of these. So I look at, you know, how much time and money it's going to take me to maintain and sell this product. Like what are the fees going to be? What are the taxes going to be? What are the marketing costs as well? That's something I didn't talk about earlier, but how are you going to market this? Are you actually going to be spending money or time marketing your product? And if so, you have to consider that in the product price as well. And then I would look at the market that I was entering. So for example, the eBooks I used to sell, if you were to go on Kindle uh, or Amazon and look for eBooks on there, most eBooks on there are gonna be under $10, right? But in the infopreneur online space, eBooks can be anything from $10 to hundreds of dollars because it's based on the value that the person is trying to convey uh, to their customer. And it also depends on who your customer is. Like if you're selling, just in this example, if you're selling an eBook about how to sell eBooks, (laughs) right? The person buying that has scope to make an enormous amount of profit from what they learn in that because they're going to be selling digital products as well. Whereas if you're selling, uh, you know, knitting patterns to someone, but they're not allowed to produce them commercially. So if they're only allowed to use them for their personal use, there's going to be a cap there because people who run businesses aren't going to buy them for their business. So they're not going to buy them as a business expense. It's only going to be people who are knitting for pleasure. So there's going to be you know, a limit on that. So my eBooks were usually, I think from memory around the $25 mark, because that's in my industry, kind of a bit of a standard price. And also I'm selling to other business owners. So they're actually buying that as a business expense and they're using that to hopefully make them a lot more money. So I can therefore, uh, I could therefore charge more for that sort of downloadable than I could for a Uh, you know, a fiction book, for example, that someone's going to read once and and put aside. And that's an, you know, that's only one example of a type of download, an ebook. If you're here, you're probably not necessarily selling ebooks. You're probably selling more printables, templates, uh, even SVG files, things like that, that you have created yourself. And so you have to think about that. Are they for personal use of the, of the end user 
or are they for commercial use of the end user? And that will also go into that pricing value situation. Another thing to consider is if you're just starting out, I would recommend that you consider pricing your stuff on the lower end, not too cheap. And I even hesitate to say this because in our industry, people are so used to underpricing their work, like chronically underpricing everything they do. So by, by, by cheaper, I don't mean cheap. I don't mean like ridiculously cheap so that you're making nothing off it. I just mean consider pricing things on the lower end of this scale just to get a few sales, you know, and a few more reviews under your belt and build a little bit of a reputation for your business. And then once things start to tick over, you can slowly start to kind of inch those prices up until you're at the point that you really want them to be. And that can be where they'll stay. Okay, I've got a final couple of tips for you if you're kind of new to this space of things you can do. Number one, sell bundles. Bundles are a great idea for digital downloads because you can sell you know, more for less, if you know what I mean. So take three of your products that make sense together, bundle them together for a price that's slightly lower than it would be if people bought all three of them individually and boom, that's an upsell option and people might take that option instead of just buying one, they might buy two or three patterns or downloads from you. Another thing to take advantage of with downloads, depending on the type of file, or what you're offering to people, include some sort of special or offer in the file they download. So with an ebook, I would on the final page have like an upsell or cross sell, I should say, to one of my other ebooks. I'd be like, if you enjoyed this, check this one out. Um, if you're selling you know, image files or something, you can send them the image file and a document with more information about your business and, uh, you know, a link to your shop and maybe um, some products that, or a product category that they might find useful. Like if you like this product, you might like this as well. So take advantage of that. And you can do something similar when you sell physical products as well. You know, you can include something um, in the packaging where you give people a special offer or deal, and you can do the same. You could offer them a, you know, a 10% discount on um, their their next purchases or something like that as well. So there's lots of ways here that you can kind of encourage them to come back and shop with you again. Now, if this is something that you definitely are interested in, I've got a link to you below with a podcast episode I did with Julie Berninger of Gold City Ventures, and she has a very successful printable shop, and she actually teaches other people how to also have very successful printable shops. Uh, And I know she runs a course about it a couple of times a year, I think. Uh, So I'll link to that interview below. And I'll link to her website below as well. So if you're interested in learning more from somebody who's doing this, then check her stuff out. In fact, I'm going to make it really easy for you and I'm going to put a link to it on the screen right here. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments, what are you thinking about making as part of a printables business? Have you got a niche that you want to work in? I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.